ushers, I invite you to receive offering. And, uh, and then, guess what? We're, we're, we, get to, we get to say thanks this morning. So I'll pass that over to Jen and Sathya. Yeah, so we get to say thanks to Rachel. Today is Rachel's last Sunday with us. Yeah. <laughs> Boo, but yay. Uh, yay at the same time. So Rachel, Rachel's been interning here for the last six months as worship and junior youth. And so that looks like a bunch of different things. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of admin that comes with worship, with coordinating different teams, uh, getting these things in order, these binders here and these chord charts. And Rachel has done a great job of not only being on top of that, um, but she's also put systems in place so that as she leaves, um, we don't have to suffer too much uh, without her, uh, her in that role. And she's also done an amazing job of working with the junior youth, um, particularly introducing worship as a regular component of what we do Tuesday nights. And the youth have responded uh, in a very cool way. The way um, some of the encounters that they're having uh, there because of the presence of God that's coming has been amazing. So, um, so those are just some of the things Rachel's been doing. And uh, we've been very lucky to have her. So, uh, Rachel, just want to say for myself, thank you. Thank you for all you've done here, all you've deposited in our community. And uh, we're going to miss you, um, but we wish you all the best, all the best going forward. And know wherever God takes you next, it'll be amazing. And we're, uh, we're excited we got to be a part of it. Um, so we'll just take a minute. If you guys want to stretch out your hands towards Rachel, we'll just bless the socks off of her. Um, because she has just been such a blessing to us. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, Father, we just give you so much praise and thanks for Rachel. We thank you for the call in her life to come to Sela. We thank you for the deposit and the heart of worship that she has, that she carries, that she exudes and oozes, God. And we just, uh, we just are so thankful um, for the sincerity of which she does that and leads us into worship. And God, so we just bless that to always be pure and true. Yeah. Yeah, God, we thank you for um, her showing us an example of a humble servant, always willing to serve us and just to do it without any expectation, God. So we just thank you and give you praise. And, and we, just, we just bless Rachel, Lord, just to, to have the more of you, to know the more of you. God, we just bless um, the songs and melodies that you've deposited into her heart. We just release those into the atmosphere. May they be a blessing to the more. <laughs> Yeah, we just uh, pray for increase and increased provision, God. Yeah, that the plans you have for her would be revealed. Yeah, we thank you, God, that you go before her in everything she does. Yeah, we just bless her family, God, her relationship with Dom. We bless the next steps. Yeah, and we just give you praise. In Jesus' name we say amen. Um, I just want to say thank you to all of you because the past six months has been a really great experience for me. And I just want to honor all of you for the heart that you have for God. Like, I've really seen how you guys love him and it, it comes from your heart. And you just have a passion to chase after him and to get more from him. So, yeah. Thank you, guys. All righty. Now, uh, where, I, where'd my, I saw a little buddy. Where'd he go? Where'd, 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 he, where'd he go? Come on. S send him up. Send him up this way. Remind me of his name. Cole. Cole. Come on up. I need your help. Okay, I want to tell a story. So, I want you to say the kingdom of heaven. Cole, come sit beside me, okay? I want you to say the kingdom of heaven. Okay, I want everybody to say kingdom of heaven kingdom of heaven is now. I want you to say, is now. is now. Kingdom of heaven is now. You got that? Now, I, there's this cool story. So Jesus, he went, he went to the, we'll call it church, okay? So Jesus went to church. How many of you go home for lunch after church? Anybody? You people don't eat? Come on. Jesus, get this, Jesus went home 
to eat at Peter's house. How many have ever gone to someone else's house for lunch? Okay, now you know what I'm talking about. So after church, Jesus is going home to have lunch. Do you mind being Jesus for me this morning? Okay, now I'm going to be Peter's mother-in-law. I know, I should have brought my, my towel, right? Tammy tea towel. I'm Jesus' mother-in-law, and they get home to the house. And she is sick. Uh, really sick. Uh, okay? And they, they, they're thinking, Jesus is coming to lunch, so they say, Jesus, mother-in-law is sick. Do you know what Jesus says? Take me there. Now, this is cool. I want you to go over in that corner, right? So if you can imagine, mother-in-law lying in bed. What? not feeling good and then Jesus comes into the room come on in Jesus sits beside the mother-in-law oh it's you I'm feeling sick without saying a word not a word Jesus kind of puts his hand under her shoulder right here and helps her get up ready no, I haven't done sit-ups in a long time, so here we go. You ready? Help me up. Oh, without saying a word, I want you to say that. No words. No words. And by the time mother-in-law is up, isn't this not cool? The time mother-in-law is up, it's like, oh, I got to make lunch. And mom gets up and goes to the kitchen and makes lunch for Jesus and everybody. I'll stop burping. Well, I don't have to burp anymore because I feel better. <laughs> now, here's what I want you to do. When I was a kid, I heard stories about this. How many have ever, like, hurt yourself? Because the kingdom of heaven is now, we get to do the things Jesus did. So I remember, I remember when I was your age, how many have learned to ride a bike? <gasps> awesome. And when I learned how to ride a bike, guess what? I fell a couple of times. And, and so what I learned to do is if I bruise my knee, I, so I am like five to six years old. He beat me. He breezed his knee only two times. I want, I want you to practice because I have seen, like, as, a, as an eight-year-old, little eight-year-old, six-year-old kid, I would put my hand on that and go, in Jesus' name, be healed. Have you ever done that? And, and then, like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, like, to practice. <laughs> How many of you guys have toys? Okay, so this is what I want you to do. I want you to practice, because as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, you're going to have opportunities. So let's imagine, uh-oh, horse is sick. So when you're playing with horse, ready, watch this. You didn't know Barbie can work miracles, did you? Oh, poor little sassy. In the name of Jesus, sassy, I invite you to get up. <laughs> Immediately. Do you want to see that in slow mo? Watch. In the name of Jesus. Get up. Will you do that? And then today, how many, how many of you are on March break? I want you to ask your folks. Mom, dad, mom, or dad, will you tell me a moment where God moved instantly? Where you saw God move instantly? Because the kingdom of heaven is now. So let's put our hands on our hearts. 
and say, dear Jesus, more like you. Make me more like you. So will you guys promise me to practice praying? Even if it's with your toys, or if mom or dad gets sick, put a hand on them and say, be healed in Jesus' name. Does that sound good? Awesome. We've got some pipe cleaners and stuff like that for you to hang out with. No Sunday school this morning, but in the back corner. Or you can listen to me talk. You want to do that? That's going to be fun. Okay, back corner. Bless you guys. All the people said? Amen. Amen. Cool. Thank you. Hug from Jesus. Uh, am I preaching? Okay. Whew. Sweet presence in the house today, yes? Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. All right, well, we let them get organized at the, at the kid table. Just an update. So, in, in the last two weeks, just to give you a little personal update, I'm hot. That's the first one. Um... Last two weeks, my buddy Drew, uh, uh, la- the week before, his, his, his mom died, and then this week his dad died. So he, he's lost both, both mom and dad uh, in, in the last uh, two weeks. So it's been a, um, yeah, it's been a bit of a uh, journey for him. And, and so um, his dad was not uh, well, so they had a very small funeral for uh, their mom. But when his uh, dad died, uh, we, we got to do uh, a service yesterday in our home church in Guelph. So very surreal for me. Uh, so I'm walking into a church that I walked into as an eight-year-old 40 years ago. And, and, I, and, and the same people. My, my youth group leader. Uh, I told Bronte, I said, Bronte, it'd be like you walk in here 40 years later and Mike's like 78. <laughs> and she goes, he wouldn't change. <laughs> Where are you, Mikey? Are you even here? Oh, yeah, okay, there we go. Um, and, uh, and then for, for those of you that um, remember Linda Farrell from, from Duck, uh, her, her father passed away and so we've been ministering to her family and have a, a, a funeral uh, this afternoon in, in Kitchener-Waterloo. So it's, it, it's been a full week, and yet uh, just, just amazing, because I think it was about eight years ago that uh, Linda's dad connected with uh, us and the folk at, at Duck and, and just impacted them so much that uh, extreme uh, Alzheimer's that uh, Eli kind of had, and yet he would consistently say, uh, sandwiches and Jeff McCracken. At my funeral. I think the sandwiches came first, but, you know, I'll take second. Uh, and, and so just, just an encouragement of your love and, and your blessing uh, to, their, to their family uh, and, and, and to that sense of, uh, I truly believe part of the invite back is that sense of God's presence that Eli experienced. And, and, and I believe wants his family and his children and his grandchildren to, to know and taste uh, the, the goodness of the Lord uh, in the land of the living and for all eternity. Amen. So I, I just, uh, I pass that on to you. And then, um, and, and then so for me, I'm, I'm at this church 40 years later at my buddy's parents' funeral and I'm sitting in pews that I, that I sat with my mom and dad in. Uh, that I that I sat with my grandmother to give you some sense. My grandmother, you know, it was a United Church, and my nana, the preacher, would be talking about the Bible and Jesus, and and my grandma would sit there and go, "Yes, Jesus, 
and I'd be so embarrassed, right? She'd sit beside me, and the preacher would say something, and my grandma would go, yes, Jesus, amen, and it was like so foreign to me, and and I'm thinking 40 years later, uh, my, my grandparents would be so grateful um, for uh, how much I've grown in the Lord. I, I think every parent desires more for their kids. Uh, as far as what we've experienced, both whether it's economical, you know, Eli was telling his kids, you won't, you won't be lifting mud and, and stacking bricks. There's that desire for more, even though he, he was a tradesman and a skilled one at that. Um, and, and similarly, when it comes to our faith, uh, I think parents' dreams is that our kids exceed anything. How many, how many know there's more of God than we've tasted, seen, or experienced? And, and, and that our kids and their kids would exceed whatever we've uh, been able to, to gleam uh, in, in our lives. And, and I, I just I couldn't help but sit in that pew thinking of my Nana, thinking of my family, thinking of my own life, and, and dreaming about the day when my kids come and see Mike Baton at 78 years of age, all funny and quirky as he is now. Do you know what I mean? Uh, just a little older. Uh, and, and so, as I, so, so, so you can imagine I've been in a kind of reflective mode, walking alongside Buddy Drew and and, uh, and families, and, and even pre-Easter, I, I had this first phrase that kept going through my head was, it is finished, right? And I, I think maybe more of that next week, but just that sense of, it is finished. And, and, and my immediate response when I got that word from the Lord was, Lord, we know it's finished. I, I need to know about more about your kingdom. Like, again, I'm back to that whole, on the other side of the cross, Father, inspire the body to know more of what it's like to live on the other side of the cross. On the side that falls, it is finished. And, and so when I, when I said that, I, the, the other two words that kept popping into my mind were um, instantly and immediately. Can you say that? Instantly and immediately. Like the, those two words. And, and last, last Sunday night, uh, in, our, in our ministry time, so a little pitch for Sunday night. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking at the four doors tonight, so a wonderful worship, small, intimate uh, worship, and, and then we're looking at the four doors, which is just a, a, I call it the kinder, gentler side of deliverance. It's, it's just, God wants to, you know God wants to set us free, and, and sometimes there's, there's these strongholds and stuff in our hearts and in our lives that, that we just, we haven't applied the cross to yet. And, and, and there's, there is an instantly in the kingdom. Are we in agreement with that? I, let's, if you got your Bibles, you're going to have fun with me today. We're going to take you through the whole book of Mark. Does that sound good? Everyone say amen. I'm not going to go verse by verse just to... I know you got got lunch to go home to and work some miracles while you're at it. You're going to be fine. And we love you. <laughs> we do. See? Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Mark 1, 14. Let, let's start there. So I, 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 just to give you a hint of where I'm going. One, the kingdom of heaven. So that, that is a now... Um, my, and, and looking at Jesus, I'm just re invigorated, but when I look at the ministry of Jesus. And, and so I want to declare something that experientially, how many of you know we get to declare things experientially that we might not have seen the fullness of yet? Right? And as we declare these things, do you know, the, the spoken word carries a weight and an authority to it. And, and, and it's also meant to be our focus. We need to focus on the real things of the kingdom. Right? Colossians, it says, keep your, keep your eyes fixed in heaven. So when we say heaven to earth, like what, what these things we are declaring are things we believe. Um, Bill Johnson, Jesus is perfect theology. 
So that means when I look at Jesus, who is what? The pioneer and perfecter of our faith. What I see, if Jesus is perfect theology, then my life gets to look like his life. And until it does, I continue to go more like you, Jesus. That's, that's my prayer. Until my life lines up with his, I still got a, pray to, a prayer to pray. I still got a, a life to pursue. Whoa. More like you, Jesus. And, and so there's this beautiful thing. Sometimes I've asked that question, God, what is the gospel? Mark 1, 14. Let's, let's go there. Later on, after John was arrested, Jesus went into Galilee where he preached the good news. Verse 15. The, the time promised by God has come at last. It's here. The time promised by God has come at last. That time is here. It's now. Everyone say now. He announced the kingdom of God is near. So this time is about the kingdom of God invading the earth. Heaven coming to earth. The kingdom of God. The time has come at last. It's here. The kingdom of God is near. I like that phrase. It's, it's at hand. Meaning, in some sense, it's within reach. Uh, I, I love what John Arnott often does. Is We'll do it right now, shall we? Let's, shall we pull a little of the kingdom of heaven to earth? So it's just this invitation to put our hands up in the air. The kingdom of heaven is this close. And, and let, let's bring it to our heart, because I want a heart just like Jesus. So, Father, we just, we just extend our arms, and we bring the kingdom of heaven to our hearts. More like you, Jesus. That's, that's our, our heart prayer. And so, the, this sense of, um, when, I was, when I was reading through, I, we had the mission team read through the Gospel of Mark, and just going over Mark again, Mark is like this wonderful roller coaster into the kingdom of God. It's like, it's fast, it's exciting, it's incredible. And we're going to look at the word instantly and immediately. Mark 1, 31. Are you ready to do some underlining? So after they left synagogue, I'm starting at 29, don't sweat this, Joe. After Jesus left the synagogue with James and John, they went to Simon and Andrew's home for lunch. Doesn't say lunch, but you know what they're doing. Now Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever, and they told Jesus about her right away. I love highlighting this because does this not sound like a typical day? The kingdom of heaven is now. It's in our typical day. It's, it's meant to be something that is normative. I love the fact that this story is about like they've been at church and now they're going home. Do you see church doesn't stop? And, and so, so Jesus went to her bedside, took her by the hand, helped her sit up, then the fever left, and she prepared a meal for them. How sweet is that? Jesus must have been really hungry, eh? <laughs> I, I love the fact that, I, like, I, I almost feel like I need to, there, there was no words. He went in, he sat beside her bed, he helped her up, and immediately... Immediately, she went down and, and cooked dinner. I want you to take a moment just to reflect because I feel many of us have had immediate God moments. And, and I just want to stir up the faith in the room for this expectation that I believe is part of living kingdom life. So take a moment and share with someone close by just a memory of an immediate God moment. For, for example, it doesn't have to be a healing. It could be, I, I remember the first time I was 15 years old at a United Church camp, and they said, do you know Jesus? And I uttered my first prayer, Jesus, if you're real, I need to know. And the moment I said Jesus' name, woo, I got the, like the warm fuzzies, cold tinglies. I, I didn't have a language for it. I just, I was like this 15-year-old kid that got to play with the Holy Spirit, not even knowing, because... Because then every time I thought, ooh, I'm going to say Jesus' name. And every time I said his name, it was fun. It was immediate. It was instant. Take a moment and just, just share. And if, uh, and if you don't have an immediate, 
after the other person shares their immediate, I just want them to pray, God, immediate for my friend sitting beside me. Does that sound like a plan? Okay, take a moment to share with one another. You guys are awesome. Aren't you? Just awesome. Did did you did you learn some some new thing about the person sitting beside you? Yeah. Awesome. Good. The the kingdom of heaven is now. And and, and I just I I want to stir that expectation for now. Sophia, come on up. I'll just, just because Sophia was my partner, we'll, we'll kind of, uh, just, just your immediate story. You guys are okay that we share broader, right? Yeah. I knew I should have partnered with him. He's going to call me up. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, my, my immediate, that came to my, my mind was when I was in California. I was at a conference, and I had been asking God for weeks uh, for the gift of tongues. I wanted to speak in tongues, because uh, I was starting to get exposed to it, but I had never experienced it myself. So just in the middle of a worship set, and, um, and I had kind of asked God again, and I felt like he said, just start talking. And, uh, and so I started talking, and then before I knew it, I was kind of speaking in tongues. It was really, really small, to be honest. Like, if I didn't have the faith for it, I wouldn't have even believed I was doing it. But I just wanted it so bad that I knew even that little bit was, was it. And uh, yeah, so that was my moment. Yeah, God. <laughs> what was your immediate? Yeah, you can stand. <laughs> the one that came to mind is uh, last, last weekend I sh- was my first time sharing my testimony in the reservation. And one of the things that really, um, uh, I felt the immediateness of it was that when I shared that the people who are being hurt the most are the softest hearts. Mm. And right away I knew the youngest person, a young lady, in the um, congregation um, was touched by it and she came to me and said that really touched me and I knew it was an immediate thing. Yeah. 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 And, and I, I, I am excited that in many ways I could pass this microphone around to many, uh, many of us and, and we would hear the, the like when God works it's immediate. 
We'll, we'll talk about the times in between and times waiting because we've experienced those. But, but I want to remind you this morning that when God is on the move, when the kingdom of heaven is present, it's immediate. And we can, we, we can expect that to be normal for us. But so, when, so when I say I, I reflect on my moment sitting in that pew 40 years ago as an eight-year-old kid who may have fallen off his bike and prayed for his knee, and now for, at 48, almost 50, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I, I can, I, there, there, is a, there is a new strength when I walk into a hospital room with a dying person. There, there is a new faith when I'm praying for someone that's sick. And, and I know that that is meant to be on the increase in my life. I know that is meant to be on the increase in my life. So let's go over a couple of scriptures. And I want, I want us to, Joe, we got them for on the wall, right? So let's, let's put them up. And we'll, can we read these out loud just to get the word of God percolating in our spirits? And if, if you want to follow, I'll, I'll give you a heads up. So our next one is, is Mark 1, 42. And, and so... Here, here's a fellow that's, that is being healed of leprosy, right? Uh, I love 41 where it says, Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, be healed. Like this, this, is, this is our, does God want to heal scripture? This is, this is Jesus saying, I am willing, be healed. And it's moving from that place of compassion. So, so I want you to think, those little nudges, like how many of you have ever gone to a workplace, a family gathering, and you feel this twinge of compassion stir in your heart? I just want to affirm that that is the presence of Jesus inviting you to bring the kingdom of heaven into that moment. Trust it. Trust it. Let's read it out loud. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. Next verse, Joe. Instantly, the leprosy disappeared and the man was healed. <sighs> Instantly. I, that, that, that was, I, when I was in Hong Kong, that was the amazing thing where people, um, drug addicts, set free from heroin. Like, we, we saw the 72-hour the process, but on the street, there were many and many testimony where the person came up and just reached out their hand and said, would you like my Jesus? And instantly, they were set free from, from, from heroin. It, I, I, can remember, I remember the excitement of Nelson when we, when we were on a mission trip, and there was this, this um, man who was quite inebriated come up, and Nelson kind of, you know, engaged the fellow and, and prayed, and he sobered right up. Totally went sober. Instantly. I, I'm, I'm, I want to, can you, can you hear God's heart this morning? This, to stir up that expectation for the instant. Oh. Mark 2. I love this story. This is our through the roof story. 9 to 12. Joe, can we put those words up? Let's read it together. Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand, pick up your mat, and go home. Oh, this is the best. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, We've never seen anything like this before. Amen. Jesus, more like you. More like you. That, that heart cry. Uh, Mark 3, 35, 3, verse 5. Joe? This is the man with the shriveled up hand. He looked around at them angrily and was deeply saddened by their hard hearts. Then he said to the man, hold out your hand. I can... How, how many of you know I was serious when I encouraged the kids to practice? Like, I'm just saying we go for it. We go for it. We go for it until we see 
God manifest the kingdom in front of our eyes like he promises us. I, I, I remember we, another mission trip, Mike Baton, this, there was a fellow totally curled up, and Mike was fully expectant that this hand would unravel. And I was embarrassed. Huh? I'm gonna sh- I, will sh- I was embarrassed because I was the minister going, oh my God, I can't believe what he's doing. How many of you know ministers like me need faith like that? Faith like what you have. Can we encourage one another? Be, be encouraged by, by our willingness. So I'm, share, I'm sharing the, 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 the hesitancy that I think is natural, the, the, the fear that we have to press through in believing that Jesus has given us all authority in heaven and earth to live like him. And then Mark, Mark 4, 39. Joe, let's put that up. When Jesus woke up, so this, there, he's in the boat, right? This is the storm. It's crazy outside. We even have authority over the weather. Everyone's saying, amen. amen. Yeah, plan your summer holidays and then pray. <laughs> when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the water, silence, be still. Suddenly, the wind stopped and there was great calm. Do you see the word suddenly there? Um, let's go to Mark 5, 13 and 15. Oh, I love the, this is the story of the Gerasene demoniac. So this is, this is deliverance 101 with Jesus. I, I, I want you to see that when you walk into a room, you carry the kingdom of heaven. He walks into this community and stuff manifests. And then he sets someone free. Can you... Can you I, I, remember, I remember Donna's moment where she thought she was having a heart attack and was in the hospital, and she was like in the zone, God zone. So there she is. She's kind of like thinking she's having a heart attack, something wrong, can barely breathe, and yet she is so happy to be where she is because she's just in the presence of God. And the person in the room in the hospital, I love this story, the person in the room, like she comes in and it's like, what? Like you, you wouldn't... You can just imagine Donna going through stress and yet totally joy-filled in the Holy Spirit. Yes? And, and the person in the, in the bed across from her, she goes, I don't know what you've brought in here, but she was able to take off her oxygen mask because she could breathe. I, I just want, we carry the kingdom with us. Go ahead, look at your neighbor and say, I'm a kingdom carrier. So, yeah, I feel like there's good energy around that. Yeah. All right. Mark, Mark 5, 13 and 15. So this is the fellow that got completely delivered. Jesus gave them permission. So he, he, he did a little barter with the demons, remember? Okay, you want the pigs, head into the pigs and off the cliff you go. So Jesus gave them permission. The evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the entire herd of 2,000 pigs plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. Interesting. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus. This is my favorite part of the story. And they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons. Remember, this is the guy they tried locking up at night. He'd break the chains because he was so strong. They're, 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 like He was having tough days in the neighborhood. There have been folks with tough days in our neighborhood that are being set free because of the prayers of the saints, folks. And and, and here, my favorite line, in an instant, in an instant, he was sitting there fully clothed and perfectly sane. I, one of my most exciting, this is going to sound strange, one of my most exciting testimonies in, in Belize this year was the amount of men, bless you ladies. We, we heard story after story of men who were, were trapped in, in alcohol and drugs, and the woman said, if you don't stop, I'm done. And somehow they stopped, and Jesus met them. And, and, and there was this, 
One, how many of you remember Alec, Alex from Peru? Oh my gosh, there was this incredible drug dealer guy who, who just beamed like Alex. And, and I'm telling you, sitting there fully clothed and perfectly sane, and, and the community was afraid. Why? Because of the presence of God. It was like Eli. I was told all kinds of stories about Eli. How everywhere he went, people got him up onto the platform, like when they're on cruises, when they're at the theater in Drayton. They'd always invite him up. And then I got all this story from how he always went up. And then Flo, Florence, his wife, comes in and says, "Oh, Jeff, I'll never forget the little Nufi accent. Sorry, I'm not very good at it. I'll never forget the time you asked Eli. Remember, you were preaching on Eli." Because we were doing a walk through the Old Testament, and Eli came up to me one Sunday and said, oh, you wouldn't believe it, Jeff. I'm reading this book. How? I know that's not Nufi. <laughs> Scottish, Irish Nufi with little German. I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> sounds better with an accent. That's all I'm saying. He says, you wouldn't believe it? I'm reading this book, Jeff. Do you know, out of all the heroes in the Bible, I haven't done half the stuff of the things that they've done. I'm a good guy. And then we had the, the prophet Eli, or Eli the, who watched over the temple. I wanted him to come, and Florence says, I'll never forget that conversation you had with Eli, because you wanted him up at the front, and he wouldn't come. And then at the back of the service, he goes, Jeff, I love you. I just don't trust you. <laughs> It's the fear of the Lord. That's what that is. It's a good thing. Oh, completely healed instantly. Mark, Mark 5, 28, uh, 29. Again, let's read these words together. This is, the, this is the woman that has spent all her money on doctors. Right? And we're not knocking doctors. We're, we're grateful for the, the medical profession. But, but we're press, that doesn't mean we're not pressing in for the things of the kingdom. And the, the kingdom is a now thing. It's, it's an instantly. And, and so similarly, for she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I'll be healed. Do you see the pursuit of the kingdom? If I can just touch his robe. And this, for me, that's the simplest prayer I can come up with. Jesus, more like you. More like you. That, that, when, I, when I was praying this morning, like that, God, if I were to sum up, what's my prayer? When, when, when I'm pressing in for the kingdom, regardless of what I see, I, I want to be saying, Jesus, more like you. Because he promises me in, in John 14, 12, I tell you the truth, you will do the same things, no greater things than I do for anyone who believe. And, and so it's like, I believe, Jesus, just more like you. Make me more like you. 29, immediately, everyone say that word, immediately, immediately the bleeding stopped and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Now, I, I, want, I, I really want to release you to, to love on non-Christians. Oh, if the, I, just, just think of, of a church that is so passionate about non-Christians. Do you think that might surprise a couple of people? Forget the church. I don't, I don't want you thinking that. To release the church to love on non-Christians. With, with, with that expectation. I, like, again, I, Mike and I, you know, we meet on Thursday mornings and he was telling me about he's at work and because, because he had that great moment in Belize where the old man healed of arthritis kind of doing a little happy dance every morning and, and then goes back to work and, and and there's a guy with a, a pain in his back, and he says, oh, you know, we, we pray. Can I pray for you? And, and, and he goes, Mike's feeling heat in his hands. And he goes, you feel that heat? <laughs> this is great. And then everybody else comes into the room. You always feel that comfort zone, right? All the rest of the constructors, there's Mike with his hand on the guy's butt. Anyways. <laughs> But the, guy, the, guy's, the guy's confession is, this is a man of God. And he felt the heat, and Mike's still, Mike's still pressing for the kingdom, because again, he hobbled off. 
But how many of us know we're going for it? And to release, to release us to love people like Jesus did. He, he didn't ask for a doctrinal statement from them before he ministered. Like, every, every time I look out at you, I, my heart gets so excited about the different places you go and the different people that you're exposed to on a regular basis that have Jesus in front of them because you're there. I love that about you. Mark 5, 41. Isn't this amazing? Like, this is like every chapter, in the, it's like, boom, next. What's Jesus going to do next? Boom, next chapter. Oh, another beautiful miracle. Boom, Mark 5, 31. The mother comes in and, and, and tells her, my, my daughter, she's sick, she's dying. And then Jesus on the way heals somebody. And then someone says, hey, don't worry about the daughter. She's dead. And Jesus, beautiful teaching here. Don't look at the natural. Keep your eyes in the kingdom. Jesus says, all right, well, let's go. And holding her hand, this is the little girl, he said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. Verse 42. Let's read this together. And the girl, who was 12 years old, immediately stood up and walked around. They were overwhelmed and totally amazed. Again, immediately. Mark, Mark 6, 56. Let's read that together. Wherever he went, in villages, cities, or the countryside. Wow, isn't that kind of fun? Let's read that again because it's just exciting. Wherever he went, in villages, cities, or the countryside, they brought the sick out to the marketplaces. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. One of, my, one of my favorite Bill Johnson stories is he's, he's just in a local variety store and, and he's going up to, to buy like a, a, you know, a Mars bar and, and the person at the till gets hit with holy laughter. He's, he's, just, he's just buying a Mars bar and it's like, here, here's that. <laughs> and the presence of God just descends on this person at the till. Do we not dream of moments like that? Father, we want to so host your presence in the little things, in the, in the everyday things. That wherever we go, you, you get a reputation of, even the reputation, they'll pray for you. That, that's a reputation I want to live with. We all do. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched them were healed. I know, I know there's a Catholic church in Montreal. Shall I do a little Canadian story? There's a, there's a Catholic church in Montreal, and at the door, there was, there was the doorman. I'll call him Norman. I know I date myself. Mary Tyler Moore, if you want to look it up, YouTube. Norman the Dorman. Nor Norman, he, he had a, a little cot underneath the, the stairway. You know those stairways that go up, up the level? He had a little cot. All he would do for his entire life uh, at this church was open the door. Well, I say all he would do. He, he, he prayed for every person that walked through that door. Every person. And then that church to this day, that Dorman died... And, and from the time that doorman died, they have all the wheelchairs, all the crutches, all of all the miracles that have happened as people have entered through that door. Our, our, our prayers in the present are not in vain. To, to have a heart, God, I, I will live with this with this agenda for life. 
regardless of whether I see it a moment in my life or not, even though we're believing for yes, amen? I will live with this agenda. I'd like to think my car lives 100 years beyond me. <laughs> That's what I'm banking on. <laughs> but that people would walk through our doors, your homes. Can you imagine the next people that come to your house, like when you move? That, that miraculous healings and the presence of God would, would just fall upon people. That, that whether it's this building or another building, that, that we just create a culture of, of the kingdom of heaven is now, whether we, we see it or the next generation sees it. I want, I want my kids to see the lame walk, to see the dead rise. I know John Wimber dreamed of the day, and now we have testimonies of, of resurrections from the dead from all over the globe. To live with that same heart passion that the kingdom of heaven is now. Mark 7, another immediate moment. 34, 35. Looking up to heaven, he sighed and he said, great word. I'm just going to say, Ephetha. How's that? Ephetha. There we go. Which means, be opened. Looking at the heavens, saying, be opened. And like that first worship song that we sang today. Was that not awesome? Open up the heavens. And, and then instantly, again, will you say it with me? Instantly. Is this a good word for us today? Instantly the man could hear perfectly and his tongue was freed so he could speak, speak plainly. You know, in all those miracle stories, there is only one where, where it's progression. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, and so I know we, we often do the check. How's that? Rate it from a 10 to a 5. I, I'm just pressing in for the 100%. It, there is an example of Jesus, but I want you to know the story ends completely healed. Jeff, be a broken gong. Keep saying this till we see it. Keep saying this till we see it. People keep pressing in. The kingdom of heaven is near, it's at hand, it's now. Let's go, let's go back to Mark 5. Are our kids not being awesome this morning? You guys are awesome. Thank you for Rick, Paula, and crew. Back to Mark chapter 5. I want, I want to see something that's just, this is so cool. So here, here's our demoniac fellow. Verse 15. I'm going to start there. And the crowd gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons. And he was sitting there perfectly clothed and sane. And they were all afraid. Then those who had seen what happened told the others about the demon-possessed man and the pigs. And the crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. It's interesting. This was a personal deliverance, not a communal deliverance. And as Jesus was sitting in the boat, the man who had been possessed demon possessed begged him to go begged to go with him but Jesus said this I, I just love now no go home to your family I'm not saying this is the call on everyone but I figured you know it's March break go home to your family I, I parents grandparents uh, my my invitation is to, to share a moment with your kids this week of an instantly, of, of an immediate, to, to plant that seed of the kingdom and water that seed of the kingdom in, in your family's life. Here, here, here's a man that had been like tied up in chains, had incredible uh, reputation. Like he, he hasn't even taken the sozo training. He hasn't even taken, well, he has. Discipleship 101. Jesus can set me free in an instant. Jesus 
can heal someone of, of a life's harm in a moment. And, and so Jesus says to him, where am I? No, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the ten towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed at what he had told them. My, my encouragement is take a moment with your family. In, like, I'm not saying sit down and listen to me, kid, I'm going to preach. Share your heart. Plant the seed of the kingdom. Be random. Do you know what I mean? You're watching, like, Price is Right with your kids. I don't know what you do with your kids. And you just say, you know, Jesus healed this once immediately. Then go back on to watching Price is Right. I, I, I just want to encourage that seed. Water that seed. That the kingdom is now. It's near. It's here. And, and Jesus, more like you, I, I want to pray more instantly. More instantly. Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The time is now. All the people said, Amen. Let's thank God for that word, eh? I want, I want to start, um, as I said, so Sathya, come on up. Praise team, you can kind of come around. But I want, I want Sathya just, just for a moment on the piano. And... Uh, So like I'm in my I'm in my home church. The organs are playing. Do, do you know what I'm saying? And how many of you know God is good? Be thou my vision. Jesus more like you. I, I want us to stand. Are you ready for an impartation of the kingdom today? So we're gonna we're gonna close with two songs. And it, but but I want to I want to just that whole um, be thou my vision uh, as it, it's our heart cry. Jesus, more like you, more like you. And and so picture I saw was something like this where us as, as we're gathered we come up and if you can just put out your hand just and I, and I just touch someone's hand I don't say anything but I'm, I'm just believing the kingdom of heaven is so for you but, and I, I don't need to lose words I'm only using words because I want them to understand what I'm doing. And God is so for you. And, and the moment that the man was healed instantly. So the moment I touched this person, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's near. It's, it's within reach. And, and then the most beautiful thing that we get to do is we get to give that away. And so as we sing, I, I want us just to pass the kingdom of heaven to one another. And, and so it doesn't have to be the person right beside you. I, I think God will highlight certain people. But I just want, so it, it'll look something like this. Be thou my vision, we're singing. And you just look at him. And we know. And then I just invite you to look around and go, God, who do you want me to pass it on to? And, and I'll just I'll just start. But let's let's at least get that first verse out. Does that sound good? Jesus, more like you. And we look to you to remember who we are, who we are 
and who you created us to be. So I'm going to ask the praise team just to come up. God, I want to praise you and I want to thank you for your goodness. And, and we just want to thank you, Father, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, it's near, and it's now. And Jesus is more like you. And so let's just, just take a moment. Uh, I encourage you, look around. God, who, who do you want me to bless? And just pass that on. And let, it could be the person right beside you. But as, as we close with this last song, I invite you just to, just to move. Not say a word, but just to grab a hand. And on to the next. And then that's how we want to live our lives. Amen. Okay, let's start. The praise team will bring us in.